veteran amongst the climbing fraternity has been killed. His sponsors pushed him too hard, man. Demanding bigger, bolder, scarier routes. Me? Mwah. I'd like to get back to some good old-fashioned mountaineering. It was really special skiing with you today. Hello, everybody, all, all you nerdly listeners out there. We have an absolute treat for you tonight. We are talking to Julian Gilby, the director of a new movie, sort of like a mountaineering sort of survival thriller with Ryan Felipe and Freddie Thorpe from Winx fame, which took me about 20 minutes into the movie before I realised that was him. Uh, I, I watched Winks with my daughter, so that was a, that was a good one. Um, you may actually remember some of Julian's other movies as well. Um, the good old days of Rise of the Foot Soldier, the, the first instalment of that, which I loved. Um, Plastic, another Will Poulter is an underrated gem of a, of a star. He's finally getting there. But that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. We're here to talk about the Fantastic Summit Fever. How are you tonight, Julian? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? All right. I, I watched Summit Fever a couple of nights ago, really thoroughly enjoyed it. But one thing that's really dawning on me is that we're having another resurgence of the survival thriller movies. And um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you as the director and the writer of this movie is, why do you think we love being terrified? I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know, because, you know, I, I, this film's taken five years to make and I, I wanted to do a, a mountaineering epic. And, uh, you know, I kind of I kind of wanted to sort of seduce everybody who watches this film into the fun of the sort of the skiing, the climbing, the the, the 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 drinking with friends, all of this kind of thing, the culture of uh, of, of Chamonix and, and, and the Alps. And then slowly you start to realize it's a bit more of a Venus flytrap if you push push things and you keep pushing things and you keep pushing things, you know, the Alps bite back. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, and that's uh, that's kind of what happened here. Um, I can't I can't talk to I can't talk for other people, but you know <laughs> that the, the fears the fears in this film I think are very visceral. They're very natural. There's no villain in this movie. There's no, uh, you know, there's no. It, it's all it's all uh, it's all about situations that we can put ourselves in and, and and try and get ourselves out of. I guess you know. And uh, what what made you? want to tell this story want to make this movie and and well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mountaineer uh, myself and I've, I've i've climbed in the alps in um uh you know i climbed in the alps and i i, I climbed the Eiger via the middle lady ridge and i'd climbed uh, the matterhorn before and i'd done the don de jean and, and you know many other things and i did yeah and it was an adventure the whole culture the whole people but what i guess what inspired this particular story was you know you, you you mentioned plastic earlier and it's actually it's it's one of those films I made where we had a lovely time making it I think after a lonely place to die which which got very well reviewed and you know, got very good reactions I you know I then got offered a script and with plastic I should have thought mm, you know credit card fraud is this really something that 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 that, 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 that screams to my inner self yeah. But at the time it was fun. We sort of wanted to create a bit of a caper. And you know what? And the sad thing is you, you can work really, you know, it wasn't our script, but we, 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 we rewrote it and reshaped it. And for all it was, it, it was, people were disappointed. They were like, well, oh, you know, I mean, a lot of people were like, oh, it's okay. You know, and you put all that effort into something and you realize yeah, if you're yeah. going to put all that effort and all that time into something, you better, you better do something that, 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 that screams out to you. Mm -hmm. something that you know that's something that moves you otherwise don't fucking do it the, the time is too short when someone says hey why don't you do another gangster movie about this kilo of cocaine that needs to be moved from london to edinburgh and there's a big you know if you don't get five grand to mr big by the end of the week he's going to chop your daughter's fingers off so, oh for fuck's sake another one you know because that's what i get offered a lot of or rather i did do but i just i, I said no too many times that people don't offer me that stuff anymore um what I wanted to do was be really inspired. And after plastic, I just felt flat. Yeah. And I realized I needed to, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, I did some TV work and I did a really cool uh, section of um, ABC's of Death 2. And that was great fun, great fun to do and, you know, really bring out the gore and the horror. But, you know, I, I became inspired when, because I was, I was always trying to fit a story. Um, uh, around uh, Kevin, around the sort of the mountains and the community, but I couldn't do it. And then I, uh, you know, I was reading Touching the Void again, which is the, you know, the very famous story about Joe Simpson 
in the Andes with uh, Simon Yates and cutting the rope. And there's that amazing Kevin McDonald documentary. Uh, in And then actually what Joe Simpson had done is he'd written a prequel. He'd written a prequel uh, called This Game of Ghosts. And I was just reading it and it's like, you know, it just it, it just inspired me because there's just these bunch of 20 somethings who working as Alpine bin men in Chamonix and they were sleeping on each other's floors, you know, sometimes 20, 20 people in a flat with absolutely no fucking money, you know, literally looking under the sofa to try and find, you know, 20 francs to get a cappuccino, whatever the hell it was. And um, and they were they were living, you know, they were living in campsites on people's floors doing, you know, doing the bin jobs. And literally they had no money, but <clears throat> there was this international community. Everyone was as skint as each other. Everybody's 20 years old and they're doing this extreme mountaineering. Mm. They're, they're getting drunk in bars and, and, you know, falling in love and getting into fights, and fucking around and doing what everybody else does. And at the same time, you know, that they had this extreme mountaineering by day and this nightlife by night. And I, I just thought to myself, that is a... That's really fucking interesting. That's just like a surfing movie, but with extreme mountaineering. <laughs> and, you know, and that was and that was the culture, you know. And I'd seen this culture in Chamonix myself. But I, I was like, it was just the hook I needed. It was, I, you know, a youth culture coming of age baptism of fire movie, set within some of the most beautiful and and dangerous mountains in the world. Yep, that'll work. That's what I'll do. You know, definitely. And let's talk about that for a second because this this movie looks fantastic. It looks great. The scenery is amazing. I mean, it's again, I've seen a lonely place to die, so that was not going to be a surprise to me because you you like your physical locations. But in yeah. this day and age of hyper realized CGI and everything, and you can do whatever you want on a back lot, how do you talk the likes of Ryan Philippe and Freddie Thorpe to start climbing the actual Matterhorn, the actual Eiger? <laughs> and it's like in the Mont Blanc. Like, how do you get into that? Well, you know, you know, you know, with, with someone like Frey Thorpe actually was responsible for uh, making this film more physical and giving this film more of a physical look than even I could have possibly imagined to begin with. Because we shot this film, you know, although the bulk of the shoot was shot last year, we, we had three years building up to it because I knew I had loads of footage I needed to get off the Matterhorn, the Eiger, uh, the Don de Géant, Mont Blanc, which I had to do at different times of year for optimum safety and optimum times, skiing, uh, all of these things. And so I knew I needed one cast member way ahead of time, and it would be really good if they could do some of the climbing. And then Freddie Thought was so proficient and so physical that I was like, you know, I, I, I turned around to, to, to my producer, Tiernan, and I said, I think I think we can get him up the Matterhorn this September, you know? And he was <laughs> like, what the? You're not gonna, you don't need to put an actor up the Matterhorn. You've already gone around it in a helicopter. You've already got shots of them. You know, you, you don't need to put the actor. I said, yeah, yeah, I don't need to, but it look good, you know? And I, and I just said to him, look, look, he gets, and then, and then Tina was like, you know what? I said, look, I'll tell you what, in interviews, etc. if I let people know about it, then, then and he said, okay, well, as long as you talk about it, do it. And so, you know, and I've got, you know, so, you know, we trained with Freddie for a couple of weeks in Snowdonia and then we were out in the Alps and took a week, week, 10 days to acclimatize to the altitude. And, you know, and we went up, we went up the Matterhorn halfway up this weather that came out of nowhere. We had to go all the way back down again, all the rest of it. Then suddenly there was nobody there. And so the next day we climbed the Matterhorn in September and there was like only about eight other people on the mountain and they they they, they left by the time we got up there because we were filming little bits on the way up and yeah all of a sudden here i am on you know and, and the summit of the matterhorn is it's 100 meters long mm. and one foot wide you know it, you know you've got a swiss summit and an italian summit and you're standing on a foot wide sort of ridge of snow and rock and you know as i was filming pointing back towards france and italy you know i had um I had three and a half thousand feet straight drop down to my right, which was the north face, and a four thousand foot drop to my left, which was the south face. And I've just got, I'm just on a rope with John just out of shot. And there's Freddie with Jean Pierre Double, who's a climbing, you know, climbing guide, but dressed in the same garb. And, you know, and I gave him a few of the lines of the scene. And he's, he's standing five thousand feet above a sea of cloud, an ocean of cloud, as far as you can see. And you can see Mont Blanc 50 miles away as the crow flies and i'm thinking to myself well that's that's how it is i've been on the matterhorn before in 2011 that's how i want this film to feel and look 
And if it feels and looks like that, it's going to feel more real because, you know, Kevin, we all, it doesn't matter how good a lot of visual effects look, there can often be that slight inherent artificiality mm -hmm. in scenes that we watch. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, you watch a superhero movie and people are having a fight around a, a location that, you know, isn't necessarily really there. And, and you know, and for that genre, that's fine. But for this, you know, I don't have a hundred million dollars, uh, but I do have an edge. And my, my edge, my selling point, is well, we'll we'll do enough of this for real to say this is why it's worth watching this film because you're going to have an experience. You're really going to feel what it's like to be a young, uh, brave, foolish uh, mountaineer, and, and 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 you know you're going to go along for our adventure. And so I was like, it's going to be an adventure doing it. Filmmaking should be an adventure. And you know what it was? I was really inspired, and that then I got really inspired to make something that was extra specially insanely impossible to make but as long as we just kept taking off those shots uh then I hopefully what we've done is give you guys a show I and i absolutely love that and you and you have caught the vibe you've absolutely caught the vibe and and you can tell you can always tell when these things aren't real when these things that you know there'll, there'll be a certain bit of framing or you can tell there's a bit of green screen there or and in this movie there's none of that because you, you just did it but, but on that, I mean, you, you've you claimed the Matterhorn before and you've done the, the mountaineering and everything, but did Freddie ever, like, confide in you or tell you how it felt for him as an actor? Because not every actor gets to do that kind of stuff. No, what it was, was uh, he, uh, he he loved it. I mean, he was just, he was climbing with some of the best climbers in the world, you know, and so, you know, they, they made us feel safe, you know, I mean, you know, I'm climbing with John McCune and I mean, I'm just, I, you know, he's like, you know, I'm your climbing partner, dude. I'm like, you're, you're, yeah, but you're babysitting me too. You know, but I mean, yeah, to a certain degree, because I've never, that's because I've got to be, I've got to be working a camera. And if I'm working a camera, I need to know that somebody's looking after my life. Otherwise I'll just pan it this way and fall a mile down there. You know what I mean? And, you know, and it's like, um, but uh, you know, what, what, but, but, but what, so, so Freddie started the film three years before everybody else. You know, and so that, so I knew that I would be able to have enough of the footage to make it look, you know, as spectacular as possible. Now, Ryan Philippi, he still came and shot at, at 12,000 feet up on the Italian side of Mont Blanc. I mean, you know, when he's sort of in terrible squall conditions and with the snow and that, that was just like that, you know. Um, so Ryan, you know, we, we had him climbing with some some fantastic guides out in Italy and France and um and you know everybody everybody wanted to do more than ultimately more than what they were allowed to do at a certain point you know you have to say yeah um that's great but no you know I mean I remember Freddie was uh, we were doing some night shoots and Freddie was like can I do that 35 foot drop because I know I can do it I, if I just fall back because the rope will catch me and they're like yeah yeah we know you can do it Freddie you're not doing it yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well why not and Tian and Tian and my, my producer goes Ah, it's called an insurance company. <laughs> You're not falling 35 feet. You got you got to let John McCune take over for this shot, Freddie. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, yeah, but so he would want to do as much as possible, and all the actors wanted to do as much as they physically could, you know. And 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 yeah, so everybody kind of embraced this idea of shooting, you know, because. You, you get a lot of movies where you say to an actor, well, we'll be in London for three weeks and you'll be running around with a plastic gun, you know, <laughs> and, and blah, blah, tying somebody to a chair and oh, here's another fake kilo of cocaine. And, you know, everyone gets offered that a lot. And I'm not saying there aren't good scripts in that genre. And there are, but this this was just felt new and exciting enough that most actors, when they get, get got offered it, they were like, yeah, I'll jump at that chance, you know? So that, that's uh, that's kind of how you made it and everything. And you got, got yourself up that mountain and you got all these amazing actors who wanted to be part of it. Why don't you, because we haven't really spoken about what the movie is kind of about, although it is, it's mountaineering, it's it's the, the thrills. The film, is, the, film is, the film is, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> the film is about, you know, two young guys, one French, one English. And, uh, you know, one is about to set off and become a mountaineer in the Alps and the other is about to start his job in an office in London. And our French friend Jean Pierre says, Michael, come on out. You know, you can, you, you've got the next 50 years to be a boring son of a bitch in front of your computer. Just come out this summer and climb the big three with me the Eiger, the Matterhorn, the South Face of Mont Blanc. He's like, I can't do that. He's like, You can, I can't, you can't. No, oh, come on. Of course, he doesn't. He stays and he does his office job until he doesn't. Yeah. And 
ultimately he realizes he's going to go out and he's going to have a crazy summer of sex, drugs and rock and roll and extreme mountaineering in the Alps. And that's his plan. And things don't go exactly to plan. And yeah. And uh, yeah. And so it becomes a, a, a sort of a mountaineering disaster by the finale, as it were, you know? And I, I love listening to the way you're talking about this um obviously you can you can see the passion you can feel that you are now energized once again and and i'm I, i'm really glad you mentioned that about plastic and and how that made you feel and now you've come and you've you've really got your juices flowing again what is um when you when you sat back and watched the finished product and everything like that what do you look at and think that's the best thing we've done on this like just the the thing you're most proud of on this movie that's a, well, firstly, that's a very good question. <laughs> that's your job to ask good questions. Right. Um, that's a really good question because I, I, I've got to say, I honestly feel proud of a lot of the movie, but I, I think I feel very proud of the whole story, how I was in, able to weave a sort of a, a sort of a, a youth culture movie through a kind of an extreme mountaineering environment. Um, and so I'm, I'm very proud of kind of how the end film makes me feel because from the reactions that I've seen it does seem to register emotionally in a lot of people and you know you have to do a lot of your homework in the first half of the movie to really make people care by the time you're reaching your finale you know Kevin and so I think I'm very very proud of the film overall um, I've you know I, I haven't seen any reviews yet and I've you know I'd say I'm quietly confident that people are going to like this film, um, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm proud of just, the, you know, the physical way I wanted to make the film. And I'm so proud of the entire Chamonix and our, all of our French friends and Italian friends. And so many people got what we were trying to do and really kind of came together to, to do this, you know. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I'm, I'm glad you have, and I'm glad you made this movie because I like a lot of, a lot of people out there, um, I, I love my superhero movies, I love my action movies, but I was getting kind of bored of capes and spandex. And this last few months, last six, seven months, we've had some really, really great actual physical practical movies. So I'm always happy to see another one. And I, and I love this one. So I, I hope people pick it up on the 17th of October. Um, it's coming out from our friends over at Signature. They are going to be releasing it in the UK for us. Um, what's what's next for Julian? Well, <laughs> I have a, I have a number of projects, but um, I did say that I do see Summit Fever as my unofficial sequel to A Lonely Place to Die. And I see it as part two of my mountain trilogy. And I want to come back to the mountains and do a completely different genre again. You know, uh, and uh, it's, it's completely different. It's big, bold, it's crazy, but it's nothing like this film. Um, uh, and, I, and I also have some, you know, one always has a few, you know, uh, irons in, in, in the fire, as it were. But um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I'm uh, so, so, so watch this space. But, you know, I would also say watch this movie because um, it's, it's something I'm very proud of. And I, I was determined to create a show. You know what I was determined to do? I was determined to create, I've taken five years to give you value for money for your two hours. You're just under your two hours. I don't want to waste your two hours this evening because I know how special it is for so many people. You sit down and you get a bottle of wine, you get a hot chocolate or whatever else, get the kids in bed if you can. Good luck with that. Um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to see that's not happening. <laughs> And then, you know, that time is very special. So I want to give you a massive, massive adventure. And, you know, you know, in the States, they, they're, you know, they're, they're releasing it in select cinema theatres in the States. Um, sadly, we aren't in any uh, theatres, although we've had a, a, a few screens and we will still have, you know, a few uh, screenings, a few Q&A screenings and stuff. Um, I'll keep you up to date with that. But, um, you know, in the meantime, watch it on the biggest TV, on your biggest sound system, you know. Yeah, and I, I 100% echo that, Julian. Uh, and, and to the viewers and the listeners and everyone at home, this is a movie you need to check out. Julian, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, when, when I realised I was going to get to the guy who who made Rise of the Foot Soldier in a lonely place to get the, 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 a lonely place to die, I was very happy. 
But well, I do think... they're, they're doing it. They're doing another Rise of the Foot Soldiers. Oh, well. I mean, and they'll be doing another one, but um, I, I had to stop at one. It's, um, had, it's had its peaks and valleys, but let's be honest. Let's I'm, be honest. I'm very pleased with the first film. I'm very pleased the with the first film. Very good. But, um, but yeah. My, yeah. my, last, my last question I'm going to ask you is: You mentioned about going bigger and badder and better. I mean, how do you go from the Highlands to the Alps? Where where do you go next? <laughs> well, you know, you, you you you'd think, oh gosh, go to the Himalayas because it's twice the height. No, 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 no. This is you know, as as I said, you know, my mountain trilogy. It's about changing the genre yeah. and changing it up, and it's going to be, it's 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 in a very different genre, and um, you know and it's it's going to be super exciting that's all i can say i i, I want to i desperately want to tell you more <laughs> but I, I, we will talk about this in due course you know we will definitely talk about this in due course um i think just one last thing we were talking about being inspired yes. to, do, to, to do a film i just wanted to say one more just a couple more things if you've got two minutes Absolutely. Um, Go for it. Yeah, I can hear the children in the background. They're having their bath done right, so it's fine. <laughs> just trying um, to stay with yeah, the bath yeah. time, aren't you? Of course, of course, if we stop the interview now, I've got to run. I've got to do the bath. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Let's get a beer. Um, so, uh, <laughs> no, there were two things. Um, there were two things. There's, there's a there's a true story, a completely true story, because the finale of this film is 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 is. is I, I'm not ruining the film for any of your viewers by saying that the sort of that the final half of this movie takes place on the south side of Mont Blanc on a climb on the central pillar of Franey, and it's uh, and they're they're caught in a terrible, terrible storm, and they can't go up and they can't go down, and you know all hell breaks loose as they're trying to survive, you know, as the heavens open at fifteen thousand feet. So it's 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 very very loosely based, or I should say, just inspired by a, a terrible tragedy that happened in July 1961 on the central pillar of Franey, where seven young climbers uh, went up and got trapped on the central pillar of Franey in terribly bad weather. And out of seven of them, uh, four of them were killed. One of them fell in a crevasse. Three of them succumbed to um, succumbed to total exhaustion. They were hallucinating. Uh, at one stage, they were so delirious. They were uh, fighting each other uh, at one point. And, um, you know, two of the characters, two of the people, characters, I'm talking about a real thing here. Uh, two of them were struck by lightning repeatedly. There were blue flames coming out of one of their ears. Uh, it made, made one of the characters completely, de made one of the uh, climbers deaf. Uh, you know, they were getting struck by lightning repeatedly. and. I thought this sounds like hell on earth. And this also is exactly the kind of nightmare that lends itself to cinema. And, you know, yes, it's a tragedy that happened 61 years ago now. Mm. But, um, but you know, and, and these, were, these were young, you know, young, exciting. And anyway, what happened? They were trying to be the first to climb the central pillar of Franey and they never did. Mm -hmm. You know, three of them got down, four of them died, and the very famous British climber, Chris Bonington, um, him and a British team, ended up being the first to climb the central pillar of Franey in beautiful weather two or three weeks later, and to claim it, which is just, but anyway, you know, that was, that was, that was, I was ultimately, you know, so I was inspired, so I was inspired by a, a very real event, so, you know, we have, we have a character struck by lightning at some part in this film, and it, I can just say, to anybody, you know, sort of, you know, you'll always get somebody go online and go, ah, that's, that's very unrealistic. It wouldn't happen. I mean, uh, yeah, go outdoors, go 15,000 feet up Mont Blanc. I can assure you getting struck by lightning is not a very difficult thing to do. And, uh, you know, so I did want to always base this film and ground it in a reality. However insane the finale of this film is, and it is insane, you know? I mean, it's insane, but it's, it's insane for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also, it's, you just realize it just, it's when something gets so out of control. It's, it's just like, it's just, it, you know, things, it, it just, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And you still have to keep your head about you and try and try everything. You know, that, that human will to survive, as you were talking about survival, with that human will to survive is, is so innate, so strong. Um, you know, it's, yeah. And what is it people say, you know, how do you write a script? Um, Get somebody to climb a tree, throw apples at them repeatedly, 
see if they come down from the tree or not <laughs> you know and that's uh, that's that's your kind of your movie structure but um yeah anyway so that was a big a big sort of a uh, you know i wanted the, the reality of that I, I felt was very inspiring as well you know to do the movie well julian again thank you so much for coming on this has been an absolute pleasure i am going to try and make sure we get this movie out as much as we will promote it as much as we possibly can because i want people to see this movie as much as you do and i'm very happy to hear that you are passionate about this project <laughs> kevin that's a pleasure i am gonna have to go and do a bit of bath time now and um yeah uh and uh yeah very 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 nice to meet you <laughs>